大家好，我是主持人 Ivy， 欢迎收看本周的奥彩访谈节目。通常呢，对基础设施的投资会被认为是国家或者地方政府层面的事物。然而，事实上呢，个人和机构是有很多机会和方式来参与这一资产类别投资的。本期节目呢，我们邀请到了澳大利亚基建投资领域的领军人物 Peter McGregor， 请他来介绍一下澳洲基建投资市场。Peter McGregor 先生是 True Infrastructure 的联合创始人兼 CEO， 超过三十年的从业经历使他成为了澳洲基础设施投资领域最富经验的高管之一。Peter McGregor 先生过去的职务呢，是包括了高盛 j b w e l l 基础设施与公用事业部的合伙人和负责人，澳交所上市、资管量超过十亿澳元的澳洲基础设施基金公司执行总裁和首席运营官，以及联邦银行、维州机构银行业务部门的总裁。而且呢 ，Peter 更是一位独当一面的企业管理者。他现在还担任着美国半导体软件公司 Pivotal System 医疗设备开发商 i m i c o Medical Systems 的独立非执行董事，也曾经做过吉浪港的主席，以及墨尔本黄金海岸、达尔文和汤斯维尔机场的负责人。好了，那接下来就让我们进入到采访环节。While sustainable investment is a chance we can't ignore, the bewildering array of opportunities can be daunting for investors. Those who look under the bonnet of sectors such as renewable energies are quickly overwhelmed by the complexity. Today's self-interview, we proudly invite an industry expert with extensive experience in managing portfolios of renewables and infrastructure assets. Please join me welcoming Peter McGregor, Executive Director at True Infrastructure. Peter, welcome. Thank you, Ivy. Delighted to be here with you. Well, infrastructure is always to be considered as a low volatility and defensive industry, while the high volatility in global markets seems never to fade out. So, Peter, could you please introduce to our audience about infrastructure investment? Sure, I'd be very, very happy to do so.、Um, Look, we see infrastructure as a unique asset class, particularly in in the current environment. And as you rightly point out,、uh, infrastructure assets tend to be characterised by having very low volatility, long term return profiles.、Mm -hmm. And that's driven by a number of things.、Uh, it's driven by the businesses being invested in very long term assets. It's driven by high barriers to entry、um, and limited competition within the sector. And it's also driven by the revenue streams across、uh, across the industry, with a number of of infrastructure assets either having very heavily contracted or、uh, regulated revenue streams. And as a result, yeah, you know, infrastructure is really about long term, low volatility, growing earnings streams. And we think that's a really really interesting opportunity in the current market environment.、Uh, at the moment. Uh, we see investors having a couple of challenges. One is the ongoing volatility in global markets,、mm -hmm. um, which impacts particularly on listed、uh, share market exposures, and also the hunt for yield as interest rates globally remain at close to historic lows. So, infrastructure in our minds really is a unique opportunity to effectively target an asset class that has an equity-like return profile,、mm -hmm. but Uh, a bond-like risk profile. So,、uh, for any sophisticated investor, wholesale investor, we think it holds a place in portfolios sitting somewhere between you know, a high-growth equity exposure and、uh, you know, a low-volatility, low-income bond exposure at the moment. The other thing that's interesting to note and really relevant in the current environment is that, as a sector,、uh, infrastructure tends to have a high degree of protection against. So, for example, when we look at across our portfolio, 92% of the assets in our portfolio have an inflation component built into the revenue streams, which means that as inflation increases, so does the revenue of the underlying assets, and that's really important. We think as inflation is emerging as a key investment theme globally, so that unique combination of factors.、Uh, You know, low correlation to global markets, low volatility, high income streams, and protection against inflation means we think it's got a really important place in sophisticated large investment portfolios, particularly those、uh, on behalf of wholesale investors. <laughs> 
Yeah, such a type of asset is actually quite crucial in today's development countries' development. And I noticed that true infrastructure utilizes a fund of fund structure and providing investors with exposure to a portfolio of high quality infrastructure investment. So what sort of infrastructure assets is your fund holding, Peter? Thanks, Ivy. Great question. So uh, our name, True Infrastructure, is actually an abbreviation. Um, and true is short for transport, renewables, utilities, and energy. And those are the four subsectors uh, that we target with our, with our investments. So all of the investments we currently hold in the portfolio, the direct interest in underlying assets, are uh, across those four subsectors. So in summary, we have exposure to two separate transport assets, both seaport uh, assets, one in New South Wales and one in, in South Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have exposure to six renewable assets, uh, all wind farms uh, spread across country, uh, two utility assets, uh, including uh, TASGAS, the utility network operating in Tasmania, mm -hmm. and two energy projects, which are contracted gas generation facilities in, in Western Australia. Uh, and we're very, very comfortable with the spread across those four sectors. Uh, we see those sectors being the sectors that best represent the investment characteristics of, of infrastructure. So when we look at new opportunities, uh, we look at really the underlying nature of the, of the investments. So do, you know, do the assets have or do the businesses have uh, high barriers to entry, strong market positions? Do they have either good, high-quality, long-term uh, revenue contracts in place, or are they subject to a regulatory environment that will ensure long-term stable revenue streams? Do they have uh, inflation protection built into the revenue streams? Um, and in a number of cases, are there operating partners who can take the operating risk on behalf of us as investors in, in, those, in those assets? Uh, so across those four subsectors, our current uh, largest exposure is to renewables. And we think that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, currently about 35% of our portfolio uh, is in the form of, of renewable assets, renewable energy assets. Uh, and we see that increasing significantly over, over coming months, uh, just based on the pipeline of opportunities for our underlying managers. Uh, we expect renewables exposure to go above 50% of our portfolio early in 2022. Mm -hmm. And again, we think that's important. We're increasingly hearing from our investor base that they are looking at ways to increase their exposure uh, to the renewable sector, and in particular, looking for high quality opportunities that may not be available in the listed market. Uh, and we think that's where we're really, really well positioned to provide that opportunity to wholesale investors. Yeah, you just talked about the renewable energy assets. So maybe could you please talk more about this part from the industry players' perspective? Like, how do you operate those renewable energy assets that this area of investment and portfolio management needs some like special skill sets? And do you see any common misunderstanding that people may made about the renewable energy and the infrastructure investment? Sure. Another great question. Thanks. Thanks, Ivy. So um, you're absolutely right. They are complex assets to operate. Um, like, like, like any business, you know, a renewable energy generation business um, is complex mm -hmm. um, and needs to sort of interconnect with a broader, uh, you know, particularly energy infrastructure network. And that takes a high degree of skill and expertise to manage those, uh, those businesses. What our model is about is not trying to have that, in, that expertise in-house and not trying to manage the assets ourselves, but rather to partner with experienced operators, um, either in the form of you know, a genuine joint ownership partnership or through contractual arrangements with operators who actually take the operating risk on our behalf. So we think it's a really, really convenient alignment because a number of the operators, the utility businesses, and the energy businesses that operate in the sector are looking for you know, the opportunity to manage assets to take operational risk, but without having to commit a significant amount of capital. Mm -hmm. Our business model is the complete opposite, which is really about looking to deploy capital um, in terms of exposure to these 
to these assets or these sectors uh, without taking significant day-to-day -day operational use. So the two sit together very, very well. So all of the renewable assets in our portfolio are subject to contracts where the counterparty of the contract, the operators, take the key day-to-day -day operational risk, whereas we earn a low volatility, long-term revenue stream from actually providing the capital for those investments. And it goes to your, your question about some of the common misconceptions. I yeah. think one of the most common misconceptions um, is that there's a high degree of risk and volatility in renewable assets because, for example, wind farms you know, can't dispatch electricity when the wind isn't blowing and solar farms can't dispatch power when the sun isn't shining. And at one level, that's absolutely true. But the way uh, we our investments are, are structured, that risk doesn't sit with our investors. That risk sits with the operators. So we can earn a return uh, regardless of, as I say, whether the wind's blowing, whether the sun's shining, mm -hmm. uh, we can still earn a competitive return on the capital we have invested in the sector. So in essence, our model allows us to take a reasonably volatile business and turn it into a low volatility, long-term, secure revenue stream. And we think that's a, a really interesting opportunity for investors, you know, to gain exposure to the sector without taking those day-to-day -day operational risks. Mm -hmm. I think your professional insights in turn will help ensure that an investor is able to create the optimal portfolio from the like a risk return perspective. Yeah, and I noticed that because infrastructure industry has high barrier of entry, as you mentioned before, compared to other industry and asset classes. So it's usually only for the big institutional investors, but it's interesting to see you offering this to the bigger investor pool of high net wealth individuals. Could you please share some of the ideas when you set this fund and how this can add value to the investors? Sure. Um... And, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, it, it's exactly that challenge that led us to establish this, this fund in the first place. That um, We've seen a recent trend um, in both in Australia and, and globally, where infrastructure assets tend to be held by one of two types of investors. They're either held by the very large institutional fund managers, mm -hmm. or they're listed on, on share markets, either in Australia or, or internationally. And that's really been the challenge for uh, retail and wholesale investors is how they can find exposure to assets in the sector other than through the current listed, uh, listed opportunities. And in recent times, that opportunity has become more complicated too, as we've seen some larger listed companies effectively shift into that unlisted institutional space. So for example, here, um, in Australia, we've seen both Sydney Airport and Osnet, two very, very large multi-billion dollar listed infrastructure businesses subject to takeover by institutional investors, which means they will disappear mm -hmm. um, as an opportunity for retail and wholesale investors and become an opportunity only for, uh, for institutional investors, given, you know, given what their ownership will be. So our, our rationale for setting the business up um, was really to, to provide that bridge between wholesale investors and, um, and the institutional yep. marketplace. So we see this as an ideal, an ideal investment opportunity for wholesale investors. As I mentioned earlier, given the risk return profile, we think it sits very, very well in high net worth portfolios, larger mm -hmm. and more actively managed investment portfolios. We also th think it sits very, very well in the self-managed superannuation fund sector where, because of the long-term defensive growth nature of the assets that it really does you know, suit uh, a superannuation fund investment. Yep. So what we, we do, in essence, is to take individual wholesale investors, pull them together, bundle them together via our fund, and we then become an institutional investor invest with the underlying managers and provide access uh, to those institutional grade assets that wouldn't otherwise be, uh, be available to, to wholesale investors. Um, and you know, we've received very, very good response, strong support in the 12 months since we launched the fund. Um, and I think the model's really resonating. People appreciate the opportunity, investors appreciate the opportunity 
to gain access to those sort of assets without you know, the volatility, the risk um, that comes with, with listed market exposures. Thanks, Peter. I think our audience and investors can have a better understanding of infrastructure as an investment asset, like its unique characteristics and how it adds value to an investment portfolio and also the insights into the renewable energy asset as well. Thank you for sharing. And for more information about our program, you're welcome to visit our Chinese WeChat official account of you and subscribe our YouTube channel on Taiwan. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.